So our son's name is Ben, Benjamin Daniel, and um, he's six, and he was diagnosed last year with Asperger's syndrome, which is a form of high-functioning autism. There were certain behaviors he had um, that were very troubling and difficult to cope with. For example, um, Ben's very needed to be in control all the time, very inflexible. He would get fixated on particular things and he would need to have them. Um, for example, pigs. Ben uh, has had an obsession with pigs for a number of years now, and so... Plastic and stuffed, not real. <laughs> yes, true. Although very excited when he did see real pigs, but so he would, he would take all of his pigs and line them all up, and he would name each one of them. And, um, and if we couldn't find one of them, then it was, um, he would have a, a, a real like breakdown um, and get very, very upset and tantruming and crying. He would be incredibly emotional, crying and screaming, and these jags would last more than 20 minutes. They could be endless. This, anyone who has someone on the spectrum knows there's no eye contact or there's limited eye contact. We, can I send you yeah, We would ahead. ask Ben, um, Ben, look at my eyes, look at my eyes. By my eyes. Because he could never, he would never on his own look at your eyes, never. Mm -hmm. He would play alone. He wouldn't play with children. He would play alone yep. on his own terms. And if he was invited to be in a game, he would either refuse to be in the game or he would play the game, but he had to be in charge and he would play the game by his own rules. And it was no fun for anybody. And so he would end up being rejected um, by the other children. and. Um, usually it ended up with some sort of crying scene at the end. He would have panic attacks. They looked, they looked like using a grown-up word, panic attack, but they really looked like it. When we would um, go to a birthday party, he would start shaking, and this is the panic attack situation. He would get so frightened, and it, it was really unclear to me why. One other thing just about how Ben and I know a lot of Asperger's children control the house. And in one way that really happened with us was bedtime. It involved a bath, and then stories, and then goodnight kisses, and then prayers, and then singing. And it involved our, our daughter. And if we tried to change the variation at all, it just destroyed him. He would start screaming, he would start crying, he was uncontrolled. There were times that our daughter would be wanting to fall asleep and go into her own room. And he wouldn't go to sleep. He would just be in his bed, screaming and crying, and I'd have to literally grab my daughter, who didn't want to come back in the room, who was upset and just wanted to be, stay in her own room, a three-year-old. I'd have to sometimes grab her, bribe her, convince her, cajole her, or just grab her and bring her back, just so he could kiss her goodnight, so that he would be able to let it go, so he'd be able to go to sleep. There was an absence of physical affection. Um, ben. He, it wasn't that he didn't like to snuggle, it just seemed like it never occurred to him. Or if I held him, it seemed like I could be Eleanor Roosevelt, it wouldn't have mattered. You know, it's just, it was just someone there. And, um, and it was very painful, it was very painful as a mom. We went to a birthday party, it was really fun, it was at an ice cream parlor. He just spent the entire, probably two hours, walking around the room, feeling the wallpaper, feeling the texture of the wallpaper. He would spend hours literally building trains or doing things or sitting with books or um, without any seeming interest in other children or grown-ups um, mm -hmm. or what we were doing. Um, and it just, it was very painful. It was very painful. I have a friend, she told me her cousin in Ireland was doing something called the Sunrise Program with her six-year-old son who was diagnosed with PDD-NOS. And at that point, we were still, when we got the diagnosis for Asperger's, we, Sean and I went into a depression for about three months and we just were trying to get our bearings. About six months after that, she called me back and said, Suze, I really think you should check this out. My cousin is seeing wonderful changes in her son. I really think at least go on the website. So I went on the website and um, I watched some of the introductory webinars. 
and I felt like my heart stopped. I, I can't describe it. I just felt like something in me resonated. Um, the Sunrise program was saying that I knew how to help Ben, that I should trust myself. Hope was born in me when I saw those. It was very powerful. It was very, I started crying. And um, so I, um, I called my friend. I said, can you give me, please, your cousin's, your Irish cousin's phone number, please? I called up the Sunrise program offices and they sent me out the starter kit with the books. Um, I read Sunrise and Miracle Continues by Barry Niels Kaufman. So we decided, like, absolutely no question that, you know, I was going to come and do the startup program. It is amazing, completely spontaneous, unprompted. He just looks at us. He and I sit and um, there's so many changes, but eye contact is huge. He just and people he doesn't know will come into the house and he will talk to them and look at them and full on eye contact. For the Sunrise program, maybe be lucky if you got two or three loops of conversation back and forth and that's it. And it was about, I'd say about a month ago now, I was doing the dishes, my daughter had fallen asleep, it was around 6.30 at night and I timed it. Susan and Ben had a 15 minute conversation. It was a back and forth, Susan would say something, he would hear it, he would respond, and he would say something, and Susan would hear it, and it just went back and forth, multitude loops. The thing is that now, that's commonplace. Yeah. Every single day we have those conversations, back Absolutely. and forth, and the physical affection that I was sh sharing about wasn't there. Now, Ben automatically will come over, sit in my lap, snuggle with me. He Now he says, Mommy, I love you. Daddy, I love you. Mommy, I don't want you to go out tonight. <laughs> you know, I'm going to a meeting or something. You know, Mommy, stay home. I don't want you to go. Um, we had a conversation with him on the phone um, yesterday evening while we were away. and could never talk to him before on the phone. You couldn't we understand away. what he was saying. His language was unintelligible. And he really wasn't interested. He said to me on the phone last night, Mommy, when are you getting back? And, and I told him, and he said, when you come home, you and I are going to a hotel and he no little sisters are coming and no daddies, just you and me, mommy, and we're going to bring lots of food and lots of toys. This was completely clear. And I think the most significant change is that he wants to be with us now. Absolutely. He doesn't want to be alone. And if I'm doing the dishes or trying to get work done now, yep. It's not like it used to be. He just, he'll come in and say, Mommy, Mommy, I want to show you something, mm -hmm. Mommy. One of the things that we noticed very quickly was he stopped insisting on a goodnight kiss or a goodnight hug or anything. And he just allowed things to evolve and change and never said boo about it. And it, our nighttime routine is now in some very subtle but significant ways very different. And if she falls asleep and I put her in a room before it's time, he's okay with that. And that's something that never would have happened before. All these things that we're saying, they're not 100% all the time. We've only been doing this for <laughs> six to eight weeks full on, but, um, but they're consistently happening. And honestly, what I see is that the more time we spend in the playroom, the stronger his skills become. I feel completely convicted that Ben is going to recover because of the Sunrise program, and I really feel this. I'm just saying this. I really feel because of Sun because of the Sunrise program, Ben's autism has become a gift for our family and has brought our family into this beautiful way of living, and so it's really taken away the pain of the autism and replaced it with this sort of wonder and and that Ben is really special and. I don't have to be afraid and depressed or negative about it. It's just, it's a gift and he's getting better and we're just really grateful.